Welcome back to Hot Seat with Penzola, guys. This is season three. I am so, so excited to present to you our very first episode of Hot Seat with Penzola, season three. We've had two wonderful, successful seasons, and I really appreciate your support, guys. Every like, every comment, and every view is appreciated. We are growing because of you guys as our supporters. Really, really appreciate it. Season three is going to be massive. In season three, we're getting deeper into our conversation. We are continue to demystify and really challenge the status quo and then written rules that we live by as society. So today on, on, on Hot Seat with Penzola, we're talking about vaccines. I mean, we all know last year, around March, we went into lockdown as a result of COVID. And... Um, the vaccine rollout has started and more and more people are getting vaccines. And I just thought that it would be important for us to continue our COVID discussion uh, from season two and talk about the vaccine and, you know, unpack the fears that, you know, South Africans have about the vaccines and all these other stories that we've been hearing uh, where, you know, people are, are, are kind of, you know, very scared to take the vaccine because they read in some story that somebody took the vaccine and they passed away or it's causing clots or, you know, there, there's so many stories, guys. But today I decided to um, invite Dashnika, who's a medical doctor, but she's also got a master's in uh, public health management. Um, and I just wanted to unpack this for us in simple terms, you know. Um, doctor, thank you so much for joining me on Hot Seat with Penzola. And Thanks. thank you for making the time. Thanks so much, Penny, for having yeah. me today. <laughs> cool. So I think I'm just going to start by the simple question of, why do we need to vac we need to vaccinate against COVID? All right. So yeah, this is a <laughs> yeah, it's like good way to start yes. the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so we know that you know with COVID nineteen we have a few things in our arsenal to try and protect us. Okay. Things like wearing masks, sanitizing our hands, social distancing. You know, staying at home, avoiding big crowds. Mm, but mm. the new thing that we have that can protect us against COVID um, nineteen infection, as well as hospitalization and death. Mm. our COVID-19 vaccines. Yeah. So really, I mean, what you're saying to us is that let's use every other option that we have at our disposal to make sure that we kind of protect ourselves. And this doesn't guarantee that we're not going to get it, right? No, exactly. Yeah. So, so vaccination, you know, the, the primary aim of getting a, a COVID vaccine is to prevent you from getting hospitalized with COVID mm. and to prevent you from dying for, from COVID. Yeah. So you know, you might still get infected with COVID and you might still be able to transmit it to other people, but your risk of getting COVID is less with vaccination mm. and your risk of spreading it to others is also less. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, it sounds very simple to me, like, you know, because if, 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 if I do still get it, but it's not as bad as, as, as me being hospitalized, um, it just simply means that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not there waiting for a bed that's not available because uh, hospitals are flooded. People are dying. And I mean, I'm, I, it's, some of the people go into hospitals for other reasons, but because the hospital environment is full of so many people, they, you know, they might actually even get it in, 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 in hospital. So yeah. vaccinating means that you've just added another layer to try and, and, and and, and, and boost your immune system to protect you against COVID. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I mean, and, and, and I think, what are the different types? Because there's, you know, in, in, in the news, you hear of all these, I mean, you in the research, right? So what are the different types of, of, of vaccines that, that, that are currently available for, for, for South Africans? And I mean, globally, I know it may be different, but what's, what's available for us as South Africans? Yeah, so I'm going to start maybe chatting about all the vaccines that are available in the world right now, and okay. then we can we can hone it down to yeah. South Africa. So we currently have four different types of vaccines that are available. Okay. So the first kind are called mRNA vaccines, mm -hmm. and, and examples of this is the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. Okay. And um, the second type we have are called protein subunit vaccines, and this type is the type um, of COVID vaccine that uses this technology is called the Novavax vaccine. Okay. Um, another type that we have is, is whole um, viruses and what they do um, with the COVID virus is that they, they basically inactivate the virus and then they give you a dose of the virus into your arm, but it's inactivated so it can't replicate. So it allows your immune system to, to then identify this as foreign and create an immune response. Right, right. Um, and then the last kind of um, vaccine technology that we have is called... Um, uh, oh, viral vector vaccines yeah, yeah. Um, and examples of this is the J&J &J, um, vaccine yes, as yes, well as yes. the AstraZeneca vaccine. Yeah. 
But essentially what all these vaccines have in common is that they're trying to get our immune system trained and to recognize this SARS-CoV-2 virus as foreign so that when we are exposed to the virus that we have our immune system that's ready to fight this infection. Mm, mm. I mean, that's great. So, so, so obviously in, in the South African context, context, I've heard of the Pfizer and the Johnson & Johnson, yes, right? Yeah, so and are those the only ones that are available in South Africa? Yeah, so that's that's correct. At the yeah. moment, those are the two vaccines that have been approved and yeah. by our regulatory authority for use um, for use in, in our population. Through, yeah, this is through yeah. the, through the national vaccine rollout. Yeah, and we do obviously have access to some vaccines through clinical trials. Mm. Um, but for right now, it's the Pfizer vaccine as well as the Johnson and Johnson. Mm. Mm. And, and and I mean, one of the questions that 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 came through as I was having a casual discussion around vaccine and I was planning for this episode is that vaccines generally take very long to be developed and tested and approved and all of that. But with COVID vaccines, we it was quite, people are finding it, it was just literally very quick. So we, the one year we've got COVID, then the next we've now got a vaccine. You know, what, what's the difference and, and how is it that we got to this vaccine so quickly? Yeah, so I think, I think this is a really important question to answer. Yeah, it comes yeah. up often and... I think what we need to understand is that, you know, this getting the vaccine out this quickly was because of the international collaboration that went into creating this vaccine. Okay. So we had people, scientists from all around the world basically come together, government agencies, mm. manufacturing mm. companies, mm. all come together and put all their resources, mm. you know, um, all the science and technology that has been developed before to come together to make this um, mm, you know, mm. vaccine available um, to our population. Mm. So I think what's also um, important to know is that none of the steps in the trials were skipped. So some of them do overlap. So, so when, we, um, when we create a vaccine, for example, we first of all start off with animal studies and then we move on to a phase one trial and mm. where, we, where we test the safety of the vaccine in a small group of people. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to a phase two trial. It's a slightly bigger group and we test safety as well as efficacy. And then we move on to big phase three trials where we um, recruit a larger number of people and we test safety and efficacy. Yeah. Um, so, so these stages, none of them were skipped. So I think that's what's very important. To yeah, know. yeah. Um, but what we did is that some of these trials overlapped. So, you know, the phase one trials overlapped with the phase two trials and overlapped with the phase three phase three trials. And mm. um, we also started manufacturing vaccines before we even knew that they were effective so that we could, um, you know, get something available yeah, as soon yeah, as possible. Yeah. So, so this is this is the effort basically of of funding. I think mm. that's that's something important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, participants for these trials were also recruited in a in a very um, timeless manner. Yeah. Um, which hasn't been seen before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of things came together to make. Mm. Yeah, to get us this. To get us this. As, yeah. As well, I possible. suppose COVID itself is a pandemic kind of literally shifted in the way in which we do things and the normality and i guess this i guess vaccine development was one of the things that were also impacted and we we had to do it in the best way possible in the shortest amount of of, of time i guess yeah. right and i think i think what's also important to know is that a lot of this technology is not new so mrna vaccines you know this technology has been developed a while ago and has been used you know, yeah. to, to create other vaccines. Yeah. The technology that we use in the J&J &J vaccine mm. as well as in the AstraZeneca vaccine is not new. So we use this technology to develop other vaccines. Mm. So, it was so it's, it's technology that exists because I think there's a, there's a, a thing, a, a thought or thinking that says, you know, everything else was, start, was started from scratch and, you know, and, 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 and the question around the, the short space of time. But I think if, 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 if the technology existed and it's there so yeah. so the resources like you said it's it was collaborative right so the money and everybody else globally so it wasn't just in the south african context which obviously made it possible so and and, and, and i mean it, it makes perfect sense because you know it was almost everyone against COVID, and everyone was yeah. working together yeah, exactly. yeah okay and, and and i think the one question as well that comes up is you know how long after taking your vaccine, you know, does is the immunity provided for? You know, we've already established that the immunity it provides is that to prevent you from being 
heavily, you know, being sickly to a point where you need a hospitalization. Yes. So, so, so how long does that, that layer of protection? Yeah, so I think, you know, again, this is a really good question, one yeah. that comes up very often. And I think we don't know the answer to that just okay. yet. So I think, you know, there aren't... So well, still in are, research, yeah. Yeah, so people yeah. that are in the trials, you know, we're still following them up to see how mm. long this um, immunity lasts, mm. as well as, you know, the people that we are vaccinating through our, through our national rollout. So we don't have that answer yet. Um, mm. But, yeah. Yeah. And then talk to me about these stories. And I'm sure you in the research space have also, you know, you are part of a, a, a community and the country as well, but you've also heard the, the, the myths and the stories. What are your thoughts around that? And what would you say to somebody watching now that, that's sitting there think and believing the stories of this, the, the, the ingredients that are put in the vaccine that are not good for us, that it causes blood clots, that people are dying and it causes heart conditions, all of those stories. What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, so I think, you know, a lot of this stuff does come up and it comes up very often. And I think, first of all, people need to question the source of this information. So where is this information coming from? Mm. Is, it, is it a credible source? Is it someone that you've heard of that is related to someone that you know? Yeah. Or, um, you know, is your doctor or, or someone you trust telling you this information? And is it you know, is it credible? Yeah. So I think we first need to question where these sources are coming from. And we know that, unfortunately, with social media, that there's a lot of disinformation as well, yeah. as, well as yeah. misinformation that's being spread yeah. to create fear. And um, first of all, you know, that's, I think that's where we need to start is to question right. where is this information coming yeah. from? Is it a credible source? Yeah. And, and, and what are the cre credible sources out there? So where do we find reliable? I mean, you're saying question the... The, 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 the source, where should we be going for the right kind of information? So, so the credible sources. So in South Africa, I always um, you know, advise patients and participants to look at the South African coronavirus website, um, and, and that's run by our National Department of Health. And mm -hmm. there's a great list of frequently asked questions that are answered. Mm. Um, another great source of information is the NICD website. Um, and again, you know, it just answers answers frequently asked questions and just mm. a really, really easy way to understand. Mm, mm. Um, I know we all use social media as well. So, you know, there are some sources that are credible. So trained scientists and medical doctors, for example, um, you know, an Instagram account that's got really great information mm. is, is Dr. Amy Louise. Mm. Um, she's a medical and I mean, doctor. you did a live um, Facebook um, insert yesterday and, 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 and I mean, you know, where, where you were answering these questions, do you find that the, the credible sites that have the frequently asked questions are the same questions that you got yesterday from the crowd that was obviously listening to you? Yeah, I think, you know, the same questions do come up time and time yeah, again. And yeah. yeah, I think that, you know, those websites I mentioned do do a really good job do, of answering, of those, answering that. those okay. questions. Okay. Yeah. And then let's talk about the, the, the common side effects, you know. Um, that's always a thing. So um, I've taken my first jab and waiting for my second one. And, you know, yeah. the, the nurse, you know, spoke to me about what are the s things that I would be experiencing. And, and, and so, so what are the common ones? Yeah, so I think it's important for everyone who's planning on getting a vaccination to know this, to not be alarmed. Yes, they do experience, yes, yeah. Experience certain side effects. So, so we call them reactogenicity events. Okay. Um, and they're just the immediate reactions after getting a vaccine. Yeah. And um, some of the, you know, the common reactor events include a painful arm, mm. um, you know, sore muscles, a mm. headache, maybe mm. a bit of nausea, mm. fever, mm. and chills. Mm. And this is basically a response from your immune system reacting to the vaccine mm. so it's actually quite reassuring to get to mm. get and to get into experience some symptoms after getting vaccinated yeah but what's important to know that that these symptoms are mild they resolve on their own within two to three days okay um, and okay they tend not to affect people's ability to perform their daily activities okay and if it's more than a week or, or you know more than three days that you can't then you know you have, my assumption is that you should consult yes, a yeah, doctor. Should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have you taken a jab? 
Uh, have you been vaccinated? I have. I'm very proudly vaccinated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and which one did you get vaccinated with? Yeah, so, so I got vaccinated through the Sasanke rollout, which was for healthcare workers. Okay. Um, so I got vaccinated in, in March yes. um, with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And how did you, what was your experience on that? Yeah, so I mean, I, you know, I, I had a fever, a headache, mm. nausea. Um, yeah, I had, you know, I had some chills in the evening. Mm. I took a panado, um, a brufin, and mm. I felt much better the yeah. next day. And yeah, those I'm actually glad you mentioned that you, t you, all, you took the J&J &J because that's the one where, you know, a lot of the people that I talk to don't trust um, because they think, that, but why is it one jab only? Yeah. Um, and... Um, there was a story where they, you know, where they recalled some of the, the the vaccines for whatever reason. So, so I mean, if you've taken it, you've experienced it, and you're sitting here with me on the hot seat, and we're talking about it, and you did experience the side effects, which is normal. It's part of the process. Um, and anything? Are you are you okay? You have you didn't? I mean, just after experiencing the side effects, you nothing else. Um, you're fine. You took the one jab. Yeah, okay. no, exactly. And I, I, it's, it's, yeah, I, you mentioned quite a number of things. I, I and, did, right? <laughs> and they're, they're Let's take it back. I, they're different things within what you said that I wanted to respond to. So okay. first of all, you said, you know, some of the vaccine doses are recalled. And I think that's actually something reassuring for the public. They're recalled because there's so much rigorous processes that are in place to make sure, to make sure. that the processes are completely you know, correct and mm. that the vac vaccines are made in a safe way using um, the ingredients yeah. you know, that, that um, are meant to be used mm. in making the vaccine. So, so, so the recall is not necessarily a negative thing. It's, 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 it's further assures that you know, we were yes, checked and then they're not good enough, so bring them place. back. Okay, yes, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so that's something reassuring. And then... And then in terms of, you know, people maybe trusting one vaccine more than the more other. More than the other. I think what we need to understand is that it's actually very difficult to compare vaccines. Okay. So the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine trials, the ones, you know, that showed there's over 90% effectiveness against getting um, COVID-19. It's important to understand that these trials were done in America last year when the predominant variant that was circulating at the time was the original strain of the virus. Yes. Whereas vaccines like Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, they were done in, in a number of countries. So J&J, &J, for example, was done predominantly in Brazil and South Africa. And at the time, there were a lot more people that were getting infected and um, there were different strains of the virus that were circulating. Yeah. So, so for example, the J&J &J vaccine, at the time they did the trial, the predominant variant that was circulating in South Africa was the beta variant. Mm. Um, so, so we can't compare mm. these vaccines because they were done at a different time different with phases. different strains mm. of the virus. And now we have another strain, right? Which we're experiencing in, in, in yeah. the third wave. Yeah. And that is different to the last two. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And 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 if somebody then got COVID with this strain, with this current strain, and they we've taken a vaccine that was researched and conducted based on another strain, is the protection still the same? So I think that's what we're trying to answer right now. Okay. So more and more studies are coming out okay. you know, to, to give us real world evidence on how these mm. vaccines are working against these different strains. For example, mm. um, there was data released by the Johnson & Johnson um, trial, the Sasanke trial, yeah. yet, just yesterday, that talks about um, the, the efficacy against the Delta variant in mm. South Africa. Mm. So the trial found that the J&J vaccine is still over 90% effective at preventing death against COVID-19. Mm. And that's, that's, a that's the statistic that's really important to yeah, us. Yeah. Um, and it was found to be, yeah, I think between 60 and 70% effective against hospitalization against oh, COVID. That's great news, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's doing its purpose. It's, it's preventing people from hospitals. And that's really where we, we, we were struggling yes. at this point. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yeah it, is, yeah, it is really great news. Yeah. And then, I mean, this COVID-19, right? It... it it seems to me that it's 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 an unknown virus. Like no one knows what it is. You know, the, as soon as we've got enough enough information with the with the current strength, then it moves into something else. 
you know, it's, it almost seems like it's orchestrated. And I mean, that, 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 I, know, I know no one would actually do that. But do, we, do, we, do, you, do you see, do you foresee the research and, and get to a point where we now understand it and we've got it and we, we kind of deal, we know, we, we know deal with it in, in, in a one type of vaccination? I don't know if I'm asking this question right, but it just seems, do we know what we're dealing with? I guess that's what I'm asking. Yeah, so I think, you know, what you what what you're saying now is, is, is this something that's completely brand new to us? And yeah. I think the answer to that is no. So the coronaviruses like the, the COVID virus mm -hmm. have existed for a really long time. Okay. Um, and we've had we've had outbreaks with some, you know, very scary coronaviruses before, like the MERS outbreak, which I'm not sure if you've heard about no. before, but but it was in Asia, as well as the the um, the SARS outbreak. So it was the so so the virus that causes COVID nineteen as we know it now is SARS CoV two, but SARS CoV one was mm -hmm. a virus that caused you know um, quite a lot of deaths um, in a in an outbreak in Asia um, okay. a while ago. So, yeah, yeah. So coronaviruses are not new to us. So I think that's something important to also understand. Okay. That, you know there was a lot of work being done on vaccines against against SARS and MERS viruses before. Mm, mm. Um, and then... And are we using any of the, those ingredients of the, the, of the vaccine in the current vaccine? So I think, you know, we do use some of that science okay. and technology. Okay. Um, yeah. That okay. we, you know, we, we created for, for, those, um, for those viruses. I think what's important to know also is that viruses mutate. Like this is, you know, the new variants are not necessarily something that's surprising to us. Okay. Okay. So, so the way that viruses mutate is when they divide. So, you know, when a virus enters your body, it replicates into thousands, millions of, of more viruses. Yes, and, yeah. and every time you copy something, there is a chance that there's a mistake. Yeah. Right? So say, for example, if you're going to trace something over a piece of paper, um, there is a chance for you to make a mistake. Mm. So you're making a, sta a mistake making a copy. Mm. And that's exactly the same thing that happens with the virus, is that every time it replicates, there's a it, chance for it a chance that to it's make, different. Yeah. yeah, to make a mistake and mm. to be something different mm. to the original strain. Mm. So viruses mutating is also not something that's, that's new to that's us. New. Um, okay. And it's the same reason, for example, with the flu virus, yeah. that there's a different vaccine that comes out every year. And that's based on you know, the predicted um, variants of the flu that are circulating mm. at the mm. time because the flu virus also mutates um, very often. Mm. So, so viruses mutating, again, is also not something that's, mm. that's new to us. Mm. Um, I think it just, it, it takes time mm. to gather, you know, the data um, that can give us the answers that people want right now. Mm. Um, mm. So. I wanted to ask you, you know, what would you say to somebody that's watching that is, fear, that is scared of vaccine? And I know that it's voluntary, so nobody's forced to take it. But people are genuinely scared and fearful of their potential reaction to it, even though they understand that it reacts differently with different people. You know, is there a way that we could, we could get a, give a level of comfort to, to, to somebody that's, that's feeling that way about this virus, about this vaccine? Oh, so again, that's that's a really really good question, and I think, you know, people are scared of what they don't understand. Mm. Um, so I think you know, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation that's going around, and people don't know what to believe. Mm. But I think that's when we do need to reach out to the experts in the field, the people that that do know, and the people that we can trust. Mm. Mm. Um, and, you know, the, the regulatory authority that approves the vaccines in South Africa, the South African um, Health Products Regulatory Authority. Yeah. You know, yeah. they've been doing this for for decades. And yeah. they've, they've approved every single drug that we use in South Africa. Um, and, you know, they were involved in the processes of, you know, reviewing all the data for these vaccines and have approved it for use in South Africa. Mm. So mm. they're a body that we can trust. Yeah. You know, our, our Department of Health, we're all about, you know, making sure that we look after South Africans and their health and well-being. Yeah. And they've approved the vaccine for use. They're mm. rolling it out mm. through our national rollout. Yeah. So, so it's about, you know, trusting 
these authorities and these bodies that have the ex experts that understand exactly everything that's gone into this vaccine and, and ensuring that it's safe um, for South Africans. Yeah. So, Doc, I think one last question for me is, um, you know, a lot of the people that we talk to and, 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 and uh, you know, mention that, but my, you know, my, doctors has, my doctor actually has advised me not to take the vaccine um, for various reasons. So in the fight against this pandemic and we, we, you know, the country and the Department of Health that you work for, trying to ensure that you, vac the, the, you vaccinate as many people as, as, as possible in the country. How do we deal with the conflicting statements, you know, where the Department of Health as a whole and, 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 every, I mean, and, and some other health workers promoting the vaccine and, and driving that, but also some other health workers saying, you know, because I've personally had, uh, you know, somebody that is, a, is in the health work space that said to me, yo, don't take that thing, you know. So how do we deal with that conflict? I think that's a really good question. And, and healthcare workers are, are also susceptible to the misinformation that, you know, the rest of the general public is also, is also yeah. Um, yeah. You know, exposed to. Mm. And I think that's, that's something important to realise. So interestingly enough, we, we did a, a study called the Crown Coronation Study where we looked at the MMR vaccine to try and see if it can prevent COVID-19. And we initially started recruiting healthcare workers. And at the time, you know, there was a lot of fear and disinformation that was going around about about vaccines in general and we had a lot of healthcare workers that were really scared mm, to, to mm, take part mm. in the trial. Because they're also human, right? Yeah. yeah, and I I think, you know, there are there are certain concerns for some people to get vaccinated. So for example, if you've had an allergic reaction mm. to any to any drug or medication before, you know, you might be at a higher chance mm. of having an allergic reaction to the COVID nineteen vaccine. Or if you've got a chronic illness perhaps, you know, that you worry about. Does, it, does, that, does a chronic illness actually have any bearing in terms of what the side effects look like? Um, so, yeah, I think that's also, <laughs> that's also an interesting question mm. to ask. And, you know, the, 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 some of the things that we're concerned, you know, about before people get vaccinated is, is allergic reactions. So okay. have you had a history of any allergic reactions, um, as well as, you know, a history of any allergies to any of the ingredients in okay. the vaccine. Okay. So, you know, if your healthcare worker, you, if your healthcare provider is telling you not to get a vaccine, maybe there is something very specific Valid about reason. your condition um, that they might be concerned about. So okay. maybe that's, you know, something to, 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 yeah, to listen to. To, to. to look at, yeah. Um, but, you know, if they're just telling you, you know, something you know crazy that you're reading somewhere else as well then then maybe you know maybe you do need to consult someone else, someone and, else and get a yeah. second opinion for people with chronic diseases mm -hmm. um, we do recommend the COVID-19 vaccine depending on your chronic illness so mm -hmm. we know that you know people with high blood pressure people with diabetes are at a higher risk of getting severe COVID so you know we want to make sure that we protect that population, population. that are particularly vulnerable um, so there's no, there's no interaction, mm, you know, with mm. any medications that, you know, diabetes, the people with diabetes are taking or, mm, or any mm. antihypertensive medications yeah. um, that are of concern. Um, so it is, it is safe for them to get a vaccine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it is especially important in that population uh, for them to get a vaccine. Cool. Doctor, thank you so much once again for joining me on the hot seat with Penzola. Oh, it was such a pleasure chatting to you. And I do think that I'm a little bit more in, 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 enlightened and, and, and um, understanding this, this, this vaccine and, and how it works. And I'm hoping that, you know, my guests, my um, audience that are watching are also have learned a thing or two in terms of what you've shared with us today. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on that conversation with Dr. Dashnika. I mean, it was such an insightful and enlightening conversation for me, especially because we do read uh, lots of stories about vaccine. We also see a lot of tweets on, or, and, and, or you know, posts on social media. So I think the moral of the story here is exactly that. You know, just make sure that the information that you're getting is from a, a credible source. And, you know, reach out to the experts and understand your personal condition. Um, you know, if you have any sp specific concerns. And yeah, I mean, it is voluntary. Take it, don't take it. But yeah, I hope this conversation did give you a bit of facts around how the vaccine works. Um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. If you do have questions for the doctor, please don't hesitate to comment. I will ask you to 
you know, take some time out and just answer some of the questions on the comment section. It's been a real thing. Thank you so much. Goodbye.